Welcome to AutoSense, the world's leading community for ADAS and autonomous vehicle technology development. We create best-in-class events, training, and information for the purpose of connecting the global community of engineers, scientists, and other automotive industry experts. One such expert returning to AutoSense and joining us again is Matt Daly, the technical director for RF Pro. And Matt, always a pleasure to talk to you and, and welcome back, my friend. Thank you very much, Carl. It's great. We're looking forward to getting over to Detroit in person in a, a short while. Yeah, absolutely. So let's start at the beginning. RF Pro, tell us a little bit about the company and what separates you, what differentiates you from other driving simulation software providers. Sure. Um, so as you said, we are a driving simulation company. You know, We exist to model the real world. We let our customers interact with that world from any choice of different vehicle models or traffic simulations that they want to provide. And we provide them with a highly scalable solution. So, um, you know, a key aspect of what we do is really looking at the fidelity of the simulations and trying to keep the quality as high as possible. Um, in the past, that was all about real time and about thinking about driver in the loop simulators and hardware in the loop. And now it's about how do we do that for sensors and sensor simulations and how do we really push that simulation technology to give the highest level of value to any simulation data that um, is going to be used in sensor developments. Right. And just to tag on to that, Matt, uh, what are some of the key elements then for achieving high quality and reliable results in simulation? Um, You've got uh, two major components in any simulation. You have the software, um, which includes the rendering engine that sits at the center. And you also have the digital assets that you're going to put into that. So those locations and, and um, traffic vehicles, pedestrians, et cetera. So you've got to look at both of those two things. And so you've got to take a very um, highly controlled and um, neatly developed software simulation package. Um, we have our own in-house rendering system here both for the real-time side and for the high fidelity um, sensor simulations. And we've integrated that neatly with our interfaces so that you can link to very high quality vehicle models that our OEMs and tier ones are building themselves. And also very high quality now sensor simulations and models that, that are gonna drive along with those vehicles. So that's the, the, the software side. And then, you know, simulations are only as good as what you're going to look at. And, you know, an absolute, um, key part of our value and why we sort of differentiate ourselves from pretty much everyone else in the market is the, the quality and breadth of our um, digital assets. You know, we have LiDAR scanned, highly detailed public road models, proving grounds, um, testing locations available all over the world. And so much so that we're, we've been trusted by the OEMs and tier ones. You know, we've got 15 private proving grounds for 10 different OEMs, or maybe it's 11 now, different OEMs around the world. So, um, you know, it's it's not just about providing libraries that everybody can use, but also some very specific um, private assets as well that customers want to do because they're trying to correlate. They're trying to correlate data between their real world tests and their simulation. Because as everybody knows, and I, every time I come back here, the only thing I ever talk about is the value of simulation is only when it's correlated to those real world tests. Matt, let's talk about ray tracing and how it's different from what RF Pro already does. Sure. Um, it's hitting on that factor we just touched about, about sensor simulation. So um, as a company, we started over 15, 16 years ago now. Um, really concentrating in the real-time space for how do we get drivers um, into simulations and have driver-in-the-loop um, very detailed worlds. So we have an industry-leading rasterization engine. Um, it's based around real-time. It's, it's producing images incredibly quickly, you know, up to 240 hertz a second. That's 240 frames a second um, at very high frame rates and at very high levels of detail. But what that doesn't actually do is it doesn't give you enough time. If you, if you lock yourself to real time, you can't actually calculate everything about the world. And when we think about sensors and especially autonomous driving, you know, this is a safety critical situation. This is no longer about using those fast real time engines to give us really good approximations of what we see. We need to have much higher confidence in the um, engineering fidelity 
of those sensor simulations and and situations are complicated you know dangerous situations happen at night time um in underground situations where there's no natural light with with lots of vehicles with headlights all of these are really complex and they're very very difficult to do with a real-time engine so that's where ray tracing comes in you know ray tracing is a um, a simulation technology that's been around for many years and it's it's about simulating every single source of light and every reflection that that light takes between its source and you as an observer so you know we're talking about humans in in um the sort of cinema rendering world it's all about making the image look right for you as a human matt for tier one suppliers and oems who are working to develop next generation ADAS technologies and autonomous vehicles. How can ray tracing help? What role can it play? It can really unlock the um, the quality of the simulations at those edge cases. You know, as I say, we're working in a safety critical system here. And it's, it's not about just making lovely daytime images where we have, you know, um, cameras don't get much motion blur and they've got lots of natural light coming in. You know, we've always been able to make very nice looking um, sensor simulations for those situations, but they're not always the most safety critical. You know, what you really need to be able to do is you need to be able to identify humans crossing the road at nighttime where there's not very much ambient light around and there's vehicles and traffic lights and you know, you have sensors that are having to work extremely hard and go to the edges of their capability to sense the world around them. And so, um, you know, you have to deal with some very difficult um, situations of, uh, and that's where ray tracing is going to help the OEMs, really giving them the power of quality simulations at their most safety critical times. Matt, how do these sensor systems see the world differently than you and I? And then further to that, why is it important to replicate that in simulation? Um, I think a great example, again, if we think about nighttime. So um, what's the difference? When we're looking into the world, our eyes work quickly enough that vehicles that go past us, we still see them. Now, uh, camera-based systems, for instance, you know, they have to deal with nighttime by creating longer exposures. And as soon as you create a longer exposure, you are having to deal with motion blur. So images, you know, um, vehicles and images that have got, uh, that are moving are going to not be in a single place and a really nice sharp image. They're going to be blurred across the image. Um, You know, we always use our backgrounds for a little bit of advice and, you know, here you're, you know, you're going to see it from vehicles that are moving past you at speed. Um, So it's, it's all about, thinking about how the sensor is seeing the world and its process of taking in either light or LIDAR or radar and modeling it physically. And, you know, if we, again, if we're thinking about cameras, we might be doing that not just as a um, single exposure, but all of these automotive cameras have multiple exposures, you know, either different sets of pixels that are different sizes that are sampling the world or even doing different length exposures. So, you know, long exposures and then very short exposures to help with things like LED flicker mitigation or or HDR. We have to model that. We can't live in a world where our simulations just say, here is an image that has no motion blur in it and it's a single period of time. We have to be able to present highly engineering fidelity in the simulation for those um, complicated multiple exposure uh, situations in, in any sense of frame. Sure. Matt, are there environments and situations where ray tracing is most effective? What are your thoughts yeah. on that? It's really comes to its own anywhere. There's multiple light or multiple, um, emission sources. So again, it's always easy to talk about cameras because we, this way we see the world. So um, nighttime, you have obviously lots of headlights on vehicles, you have street lights in the world, and all of them are creating their own path and their own uh, light inputs there. So, um, yeah, the situations that are actually the best or the biggest differentiation between ray tracing and rasterization are anywhere you don't have a really nice set of natural light. So nighttime, um, underground car parks, you know, uh, as um 
as beautiful as they can be to us and we love being there but you know there are situations where there's you're having to deal with all of these different individual light bulbs that are contributing into the scene and and you just can't do that accurately with a a real-time rasterization engine Matt, it's always a pleasure to get caught up with you and just see all the advancements and the innovations that RF Pro has has made over the years. It's, it's always a pleasure. I look forward to continuing this conversation in person for AutoSense Detroit 2023. In the meantime, we want to wish you the best of luck going forward. Thanks for taking some time out of your schedule and for sharing your expertise and thought leadership. Thank you again, Matt. No worries. Thank you, Cole. For more in-depth interviews like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow AutoSense on LinkedIn. For more information on our world-class events, visit auto-sense.com. That's auto-sense.com. In Detroit, on behalf of AutoSense, I'm Carl Anthony. (laughs) Thank <laughs> you.